I was in Silicon Valley last week, and you can go onto all the job boards everywhere. And you can do the same in New Zealand. In fact, I was in a board meeting yesterday, and we were talking about employing a scrum manager. And it wasn't for a game. It was someone to actually help with agile transformational projects and how we could work through it. What is a scrum manager? Where would we, what would we look for in the attributes of a scrum manager? This is just a job board that is off one of the, the places in Silicon Valley where we've got um, VR game, um, uh, game testers, Unity developers. I'm not quite sure what a Unity developers. They're jobs that we don't even know. They're there now. What will they be in five years? What will they be in 20 years' time? Last week, some of you will have seen PwC released a report on how digitally ready our companies are. And in the middle of this report, they talk about um, last year, not this year, but last year they said it, and they're saying it again, what are the things that are impacting firms and firms that want to be in business in five years' time? They are things like blockchain, Internet of Things, 3D printing, robotics, drones, artificial intelligence, virtual reality. In Silicon Valley last week, virtual reality, integrated reality, mixed reality, and all the science behind it so that you can participate in it without wanting to vomit is moving at pace. And if you look future of jobs, and you look at the big four, the ones that were safe, the ones that in our paradigm, we dreamt of our kids being able to be chosen to work with. As um, BCom graduates, B, uh, um, 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 science graduates, math graduates, they, and they would look at the creme de la creme. They're not doing that now. They're looking for other characteristics. And for some of them, they've gone as far as saying when they assess, so they've got a very, very different approach to assessment to pick who they want. They're wanting the creme de la creme, but in terms of their character attributes. And while some of them are going as far as they don't let the assess, people making the assessment and judgment see the CV. So they remove that bias from, oh, but they were a, a top graduate from Canterbury or, or wherever. And in behind it, I'm sure a number of you have seen this, they're looking at those 21st century skills. Now, a number of people have done a lot of research on this, and, and it always is looking the same. So I've got the World Economic Forum articulation of it. But it's saying when we're looking at what we need in the future for jobs and fulfillment, we're looking at some foundation literacies. We do need the foundation of literacies in, in um, uh, numeracy, literacy, technology literacy. We need competencies in creativity and problem solving and the like. And then we need characteristics of curiosity and um, adaptability and flexibility and leadership and persistence and grit. Because what you'll be doing tomorrow is going to be different than what you'll be doing next year and the year after. So the future of jobs means we've got to look inward to our system and say, are we doing what is needing to be done to help prepare our population for that? Are we the handbrake? Are we in the way of saying there is a different way of approaching this? The second part, second driver for me is this borderless education. So there's lots of things we could talk about in these, this area, but one of the areas is to look at what's available. And these MOOCs or mass open online courses are available there for you right now. You could leave tonight and go home, and you could go online, and you could start tomorrow. No one will be trying to work out whether they think you're up to it. And a number of them, you won't pay any money. And you can finish them in six months, in five years. You can never finish them 
It's your choice. And a number of them dip into some of the best expertise, latest thinking for you to participate in. And no one can stop you doing it. And you know what? You can participate when you're five, you're 10, you're 15, you're 50. So where does that fit into the school offering? And I used this one last year and, and was very um, provocative and said, you know, the night before I'd gone on, on the website and here was Udacity and IBM Watson joining forces to offer a nano degree. A nano degree is a rebranding of MOOCs because MOOCs got a really bad rap to begin with. And um, an artificial intelligence. And I said, if I wanted to study this right now, that's where I'd go. Sorry, that's where I'd go. That's where the state of the art would be versus what we're necessarily offering um, in our system. And that, but there's plenty in our system that could help with that. And on that MOOCs and that previous slide, you'll see um, 25 million people participating. One of the big criticisms of it from the educationalists and politicians was, this is terrible though because people don't complete them. And Harvard Business Review did a, did a study last year, or the year before, and um, they looked at why do people do them? And one of the major reasons was career benefit. And of those that had completed, and even those that hadn't completed, they have a, a large percentage, you know, significantly, um, uh, statistically significantly, had... Um, achieved career benefit. What did that mean? They got a promotion or they got a transfer or they were able to operate in a different way, but they achieved that objective. And then thinking about borderless combined with, with free or demonetization, the barriers to access to education. So Microsoft will offer you a degree in data science. It plus computer visioning are the two, one of the two areas that are absolute skills shortage. You can enrol for nothing. You can complete it in whatever time you want. The only thing you'll pay if you want, if you really want a certificate at the end, you can pay $500 for it. So my fourth driver of change is the digital native. And the definition of digital natives are people that have never known a world without this connectedness and swipe right, swipe left search. They're about 14. They entered Boys High this year. And what they have are very different expectations. Access, not ownership. Um, freedom of choice, customization. They've come through, in New Zealand, some fantastic uh, primary education. They've been part of teams, collaborations, working on projects, not subjects. And they're coming into a high school where ultimately NZQA will be a great pressure on you, and with the ministry, to teach to the test. So one of the things that we really, um, I'm hopeful, is they will put pressure on all of us. They will put pressure on those of you who are parents to say, this is a load of crap. They will put pressure on you as a school. They will put, you will put pressure on us and the system so that we will actually ask these questions and move, um, move to look at the transform with haste in terms of the transformation that we need to uh, undertake for the system. And the final driver for change, and there's a great book written, it's called The uh, New Digital Era. It's quite old now. It's probably five, six years old. And it talks about one of the thing, the big thing that changes with digitization, with that computer in your hand is the power trans, trans sorry the power transfers from the government from the regulator from the corporate into the power 
of the individual. So you saw this joyful young woman at the beginning of my slide, but this time I want to talk about it in a different context, because she's an individual and she's bought, built this wonderful robot. How she built that today could be a number of ways. She could have Googled and bought the parts on eBay and sat in her room and never interacted with anyone. She could be working with someone who may be 20 years older than her or 10 years younger even than her, and they could be chatting virtually about how they're doing it and they could be sharing what's happening. She could be at a wānanga. She could be at boys, not boys high, girls high. She could actually do that a number of ways. And she could have got that experience and demonstrated that. And that's what's happening in this era, that you don't just have to do it in the pathway that has been laid out and regulated for years.